if you look at neighboring districts around us, the New Rochelle School District did have a partial ceiling collapse in one of their <laughs> elementary school rooms. Fortunately, it was during the summer. Nobody was in the classroom. Nobody got hurt. It could have been much worse, though. You know, the safety aspect is definitely there. We're not trying to scare individuals into thinking it's a dire thing that's going to happen tomorrow. But at the same time, we do have to address it. Not, we're not talking about emergency for state aid. We're talking an emergency for a potential of uh, a threat to health and safety in the building. Um, whenever that happens, we are notifying the state education department so they can be aware of the situation. Um, during that dialogue, you know, the first thing that the education department wants to know is are there any other unsafe conditions in the facility? And they want that reviewed. If there's one condition like this, perhaps it's indicative of the construction or age of construction, and they want us to review the entire facility for that reason. And it was not just the state education department that wanted that to happen, the district also requested that we perform that evaluation as well. Um, and, and that's not like any emergency, um, any that I've been involved with, that is the first order of business. And, and then, you know, I've also been dealing with the emergency in, for the Webster Elementary School in New Rochelle, which was just this past year, just a couple months ago. That emergency, we were also requested to review every other building in the district to see if there were a similar condition to to that emergency uh, that happened, that collapse that happened. So that's that not un, that's not uncommon. You know, the board can declare an emergency based on an immediate need, but the state education department might not similarly classify that project an emergency. And I'll give you a great example: if you have a massive roof leak and it caused you to shut the building down, the state is likely not going to determine that as an emergency because they're going to say you had how many years to maintain and keep that roof system in proper working order. So, you know, there are times when they don't agree and the district, of course, is forced to call something an emergency because they have to address it right away from a financial perspective, but the state education department might not also take that same viewpoint. So, you know, we, we, I just want to be, be clear about that. Uh, the, the state education department approaches uh, the term of emergency is that the district has been giving normal care and maintenance to that system to make sure it's operating and working and functioning correctly. And if it, you know, for whatever reason has a major breakdown or failure, you know, they're going to look at that and take that into consideration before they just declare something as an emergency and give aid back in the next year. The review time at SCD at the State Education Department for any electrical work, <laughs> now this is before design, so we'd have to design it, that's probably a three or four month process. The review time at SCD is 42 weeks to a year to get the project approved, to get it even reviewed. SED is running for minimum 40, 42, weeks, 42 weeks for anything mechanical, electrical, plumbing. Let, let me also say, if we're talking about auditorium seat replacement, those are different kind. It's a different kind of project. It, it still needs to be reviewed by the education department. It's typically done under what they call a level one review. Yes, it's yeah. replacement in kind. It's a system replacement in kind. And so that's a different queue. You actually, uh, you actually send them up a notification that you have something submitted as a level one. And what they're doing is they're doing a different kind of review cycle for those projects because they tend to be reviewed a lot faster, they're not as complicated, and they're relying more on the professional stamping the documents that they've done the due diligence like they always should be able to, and there's no exhaustive um, code compliance and other kinds of re reviews that they have to address. So those get through a queue in about, I think the level one queue right now is about four weeks. So it's a very different, obviously very different than 42 weeks. There are many exclusions in insurance for neglect, yes. right? And so if we're not good custodians of our buildings, insurance companies are not gonna pay for losses associated with us not taking care of our buildings. So if you say, well, geez, just let that building be, and if the roof leaks, just let it continue to leak, and we'll just put insurance claims in after insurance claims. That's not how things work. Negligence You're is not a covered peril. When we're talking about roof failures, uh, the possibilities of that within the district, we're talking about leaks, right? 
because it was not too long ago that we were pretty much assured that none of these roofs were in imminent danger of collapsing. Yeah, I mean, Tom, that's talk changed, about, that's Tom, talk noted. about New Rochelle, though. Talk about New Rochelle. <laughs> so, well, I, I know about New Rochelle. Well, the but, leaks yeah. in the roof. Yeah. The, the, major, Go ahead. the major contributor to the collapse of the ceiling systems in New Rochelle was the roof leaking over time. Okay. And that deteriorated that system. It was a, a lath and plaster system that was affixed to a wood substrate, which was part of the roof structure. And over time, those leaks, the major water damage, loosened that system to the point when the load transferred away from the point, the fasteners, it was nailed in place, the lath was nailed in place. When that load transferred after it released, enough of those transferred where it collapses the whole system. It's a progressive collapse. I, I so, know. And I'm, as uh, what we're doing right now, just to give you a, a glimpse, just similar to what we did at Congress, so we were then tasked to review every ceiling in that building as well as every similar ceiling of similar vintage building in the entire district to make sure that. So in, in that building, Daniel Webster, we are removing <coughs> every single ceiling in the building and they will be completely replaced. And of course, prior to doing that, we had to relocate 550 kids to a parochial school that was available and, and at great expense, make it ready for the students um, for the next, they're gonna move back at the end of December uh, and then we gotta move the whole program back. And as you might imagine, and that was the same case in, in New Rochelle, these are typically concealed conditions. So when you have a roof leak, it doesn't become immediately evident. If we have drop ceilings in classrooms and such, that roof could be affecting your structural system or your deck condition without you knowing it for years. The Washingtonville collapse is, a, is one in recent memory up in Orange County. That was, uh, the, the structure was affected by roof condition. It was a particular type of structure with inverted C channels in the bar joists and it cupped the water, but it stemmed from roof leaking and it collapsed an entire classroom. Fortunately, no kids in the classroom. But that was something that was completely undetected um, from, from the inside of the classroom. Okay. The, so, the superintendent of the New Rochelle School District said that this resulted in a term he called decades of deferred maintenance. So we don't want to be the ones, we're on the board now, me and Darren don't want to be the ones that in five years something happened and we didn't try to do something about it now. So we need to get this work done. You're also right now going through your building condition survey. And as part of that survey, um, there's the requirement of the professional to inspect all concealed ceiling areas so that they directly can review the structural systems present in the building. And, and they're looking for those signs of either deterioration from roof leaks that are undetectable. Uh, you're looking for those types of joist systems that now need to be, uh, no, you know, you need to be aware of. Um, and you actually do have some of those joist systems in your buildings. Um, but they're, they're, in, oh, they're in good shape. Um, and so you're looking for those kinds of conditions. And then you will get a report. And I would assume that the professional, because it's not CSR that's doing your B BCS, I would assume that this firm that does your BCS would bring anything of imminent um, potential threat to health and, and life safety, would bring that to your attention right away um, and make sure it gets addressed immediately. At New Rochelle. Um, there, they're doing the vote at exactly the same time we are, but they're starting the project during this upcoming summer if the $50 million bond succeeds in New Rochelle. And my understanding from the literature available on the New Rochelle website about that bond is that notwithstanding the two schools that had serious roof problems, one of which came down, the, the approvals didn't take nearly the amount of time that we're suggesting here, which would, according to last week's discussion, prevent us from waiting a year and starting in the same summer. It's uh, two, two different issues, um, and not issues. Uh, first is they are authorizing early design services. So they're actually, we're gonna start designing the project right away, um, actually this month, uh, to be ahead of the cycle. And in addition, the scope of work of the very first phase is extremely limited to replacement only of very specific systems so we can, we can submit it as a level one, uh, as a level one project, which has a different review cycle. And it actually is somewhat an extension of the emergency. Uh, a lot of that first phase is focused at Webster. 
uh, for the roof replacement and the masonry that is now in disrepair that was you know the result and the impact of the ceiling collapse uh, in, in that building so it's it's actually kind of an extension the first phase is actually an extension of that project but the other is they're not waiting till late December to authorize design services they're authorizing them this month so that we can have those in the queue as soon as possible couldn't I mean couldn't in order to plan out in advance couldn't the same thing be done here uh, we'd prefer to have taxpayer approval on the plan and the bond before we actually go ahead and spend money on that. I mean, I'd hate to put in the work and then if the referendum gets turned down, then we've spent money on that engineering that isn't going to be used. Do you mind me asking how much that's costing? Uh, well, I, obviously, I can't divulge costs relative to another district. I mean, that would be inappropriate for me in a public session.